Hi, I'm Steve Gaynor from Fulbright. I'm the writer and director of Open Roads. Fulbright is a company that picks its projects very carefully. So how did you come up with the idea for Open Roads? Well, we are also a company that I think um, is, is always kind of cognizant of trying to do something new with each of the projects that, that we do. Um, you know, we make narrative story-based games, but we always want to kind of find something that um, pushes us in a new direction. And so for, for Open Roads, the really big thing that we started from was Fulbright games have, have always been about exploring a place, finding out who the people were that, that lived there or, or you know, that, that occupied that space by what you find. But they've always been pretty solitary experiences. It's about you and the place and, and, and kind of piecing that story together. And we wanted to push ourselves to say, what is the experience like if there's somebody else in the room with you while you're, you're exploring and finding all of these things? Um, and so that was our, our starting point of saying, you know, if there's this other character with you that's sort of adding perspective to what you're finding and, and is in a dialogue with you about this story that you're discovering, um, you know, who who is that other person that's there with you? What is this uh, this journey that they're going on? Um, and, and it led us to the the form that Open Roads takes, which is a mother daughter road trip adventure <laughs> that we're really excited to be able to uh, to, to to explore as a, a new theme for us. I'm I'm, I'm cognizant that Fulbright's games are like very character driven, and we don't know a lot about those characters at the beginning. We kind of find out about them more as we go. But having said that, what do we know about Tess and Opal so far? Well, the game takes place in 2003. Um, so, uh, you know, they, they are at um, at that point that, I don't know, depending on how old you are, uh, <laughs> you remember as, uh, you know, a, 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 a sort of scary transitional time um, in, in our own uh, history and in our lives at that time, I think. You know, it's like, <laughs> we're <laughs> like it, it's it's a it's a post 9 11 era and now i'm like in 2021 and i'm like we're in a post something era right now so it feels uh sadly resonant uh i guess in, in this feeling of you know there are two people that are um that are they're in a world where a lot of things have been shaken up um and i think that you know that is the the point that they are in their personal lives as well um the the starting point for the story is um tess's grandmother opal's mother um has recently passed away and tess was really close with her grandmother um and in that that sort of aftermath of this big loss in both of their lives they're going through her stuff and kind of sorting through what's left and they find these hints and clues of this 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 episode in uh, Tessa's grandmother's life, you know, from decades ago, um, that neither of them ever knew about before. Uh, it kind of upends their understanding of this person that they thought they knew better than anyone. And so it sends them on this journey back to uh, places where Opal had spent time during her youth to try to dig up the, the clues that um, were left behind to solve this family mystery and see like what was really going on in the past that there are these hints of. Um, and so, you know, within that, uh, you're really discovering, like you're, like you're saying, who Opal and Tess are as you play. Uh, when you have dialogue with Opal, it's as much about, you know, saying what you think of this, this clue that you found as saying what you think about Tess's space in the relationship, how, how you want to push um, that, that tension that's between them um, and how you want to kind of express who you are within that space along with what you're finding. A major aspect of Open Roads is being on the road itself. So what <laughs> what are players going to experience while they're in the car driving across the country? <laughs> well, the, you know, the, uh, for us, the, the on the road part of Open Roads is really about um, evoking that, that kind of moment that I think so many of us remember from growing up, you know, that, that kind of feeling of being on the road trip, you know, with your, your family. Um, there's that mix of, 
you know, excitement and, and that you're going somewhere that maybe you've never been before. And also, uh, you know, the tedium of like, oh, how are we going to spend all this time uh, that we're just stuck here together? But that's a great space to put two characters in, you know, <laughs> like if they have stuff that they haven't dealt with and they're just trapped in this car together, um, I think those conflicts are going to rise to the surface. So, you know, the, the, the road segments are kind of the connective tissue between the main exploration sections of the game. Um, and the intent is to kind of give you those feelings of what it was like being in a car on that kind of trip, allow you to, you know, mess with all the stuff that, um, that, that is there right in front of you, you know, whether it's going through the stuff in the glove box or talking about things that are passing on the roadside. Um, and just having that, uh, that sort of, um, you know, the, the, it's more about evoking um, the feeling of being in the car than really, uh, I guess, forcing you to be stuck in there for a ton of time because at some point it's not actually that fun to, <laughs> to be in a, in a car for hours on end. Um, you know, it, we're, we're not trying to uh, be the second coming of Desert Bus or anything. <laughs> so hopefully it's kind of that, that snapshot of that moment between places um, as you, you head to your next destination. The dialogue system appears to be a big a big component of the game. And in what ways does it differ from what we've seen in the past with Gone Home or Tacoma? Well, I mean, as far as our, our prior games go, it's the first time that you get to be directly involved in real-time dialogue with another, another character that you're face-to-face -face with, which is, you know, a big step for us as developers. Um, but it's it's also something that, you know, we're familiar with from, from tons of games, you know, whether it's Mass Effect or Firewatch. Um, and we're, we're drawing from influences that um, we hope make your your entree into the dialogue between the characters as um, you know accessible as possible. So we aren't trying to reinvent the wheel. It's not some kind of like crazy procedural dialogue system. Um, but the the point of the dialogue is for it to be a layer that builds on the kind of exploration and discovery that are at the heart of our games. Um, so you know you might not just find something and look at it, and then you hear an audio diary that tells you more. You find something, you look at it you choose as a player that you want to talk with mom about it. And it can lead to a whole conversation that can result in you discovering things about you know, the characters and what they've been through together that you might not have, have ever expected to come from, from this little starting point. Um, but really, you know, it's, it's much more about giving the player the expressive space within that relationship to choose how they want Tess to present herself and how they want her to kind of push and pull on what she's getting from her mom and how kind of open her mom is being with her about what they're finding um, and being able to ha inhabit that role through the dialogue. Watching the trailer for Open Roads, the art style and the animation just stand out immediately. The presentation looks very different from what we've seen in your past games. So what made you want to branch out into that distinctly different style rather than go with what you've done in the past? Well, I mean, part of it was uh, was certainly what you pointed out right there, you know, like, as I was saying earlier, we always try to find, you know, something in a new game that is, um, you know, a new challenge for us or something we haven't done before. And, you know, we've always been really proud of how our games look, but we've never been uh, a visuals first studio. And we wanted to push ourselves to say, can we make a game where people just, as soon as they look at it, they say, oh, that looks, you know, that, that uh, you've got my attention, <laughs> you know, like I, I'm, I'm excited about this game um, because of that visual presentation. Um, but, you know, the specifics of why are we doing 2D hand animated characters in these 3D environments um, is really partly uh, just a, an innate love of those kinds of visuals at our studio, you know, whether it's classic feature film animation from Studio Ghibli or, you know, classic Disney films or, um, you know, classic hand animated uh, video game um, uh, visuals, like a, a really big, important title for me when I was growing up was Full Throttle, which, you know, LucasArts sort of 
they dove into the the CD-ROM era by doing these uh, these 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 just to me, especially at the time in 1995, just mind blowing. You know, full screen animations that told you the cinematic story, um, and so you know, part of it was just the love of that form, um, and part of it is that you know we knew we wanted this other character in the room with you, sharing the the experience with you, you know, being present for what you're finding, but that we didn't want to do that via a kind of like very traditional, you know, literal high fidelity, you know, like it's an AI that's following you around and they have all this head tracking and they, you know, are pathing everywhere. You know, I worked on Bioshock Infinite. I know how much of an investment a character like Elizabeth is. We're not trying to out The Last of Us, The Last of Us or anything. Um, and so the challenge for us was how do we put this character on screen and put them in the world with you in a way that you know, is producible by us, but also um, gives you this this very kind of like human impression of their presence without going to that kind of photorealistic um, extent. And so bridging the, the, the kind of 2D, 3D divide and doing the work to make these hand animated characters feel like they're you know, living in the space with you um, is the challenge. Uh, but it's something that, um, that we're really excited with with how it's coming up on screen because in a lot of ways, it's just not something that we've we've seen before uh, in a game, which is some of the most exciting stuff to work on. Whereas you put out Gone Home and Tacoma on your own as self-published titles, for Open Roads, you have the publishing help of Annapurna Interactive. So what made you want to work together and what have they contributed to the project? Yeah, I mean, some of it is, um, is really practical. You know, like we had shipped a couple of games um, solo and get like making a game and then getting a game out there to players are two very different and and very uh challenging jobs and we just uh i think after tacoma realized that our passion was for making the thing and it would really be great to work with people who were experts at getting it onto platforms getting it out to um to players you know, getting it um, into that space where, where it's in people's hands in great shape. And Annapurna, you know, their, um, the, the games they make, their catalog, their approach to, to what they um, publish just felt like a natural fit to us. Um, and also in making a, you know, a narrative focused game, uh, they have such a great connection to, uh, you know, Hollywood, you know, film talent and the, the they take narrative really seriously and have tons of connections in that space. Um, and so, you know, being able to rely on them to uh, to kind of push what we're doing into a, a space where, um, you know, we have access to um, to maybe some approaches uh, to, 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 to making that story a reality that we wouldn't have without a partner like Annapurna was really exciting to us as well. I'm glad you mentioned Annapurna's Hollywood connections. So I wanted to ask, when did Kerry Russell and Caitlin Dever first join the project and what made them the right casting choices for the main characters? Well, we started talking to them middle, late last year. So, you know, maybe like a five or six months ago or something like that. Um, and, you know, what made them right for us uh, was that, you know, we were really fortunate that we had that, um, that, that, that we have the backing of Annapurna, they started that discussion of, if you were gonna cast these these characters, who would you want to play them? Um, and, you know, I'm, I, I was a huge fan of The Americans that Carrie uh, starred in. I was a huge fan of Booksmart, the film um, that Caitlin starred in. And the, the, the presence that they had as those characters, you know, um, Carrie having this very imposing presence, but also, such a humanity to her in her role on uh, the Americans and Caitlin having such obvious, just like natural comic timing, but also the sense of vulnerability to her in Booksmart. They were the the people that came to mind. And, uh, you know, we were very fortunate that Annapurna reached out and they were both excited about the project, excited about the, the story and um, what they could bring to the characters. Uh, and we started um, doing our first rounds of voice recording with them, and um, it's been it's been really great so far. They've really kind of um, 
naturally found the voices of the characters that they're they're bringing into recording and um, it's exciting to start to be able to actually get that into the game and hear them in the space while we're testing. And when do you hope to release Open Roads? Well, we hope to release it <laughs> as as soon as we uh, as soon as we responsibly can. It's one of those things that we're um, we're nailing down the details of now. We're also nailing down the details of exactly what our launch platforms are going to be. So there's a number of specifics about um, about when and exactly how the the game is coming out that we're going to be nailing down and hopefully have more to share about in you know, the coming months. Yeah, Steve, when I talk to you specifically about writing, uh, when you're writing for a game or just in general, do you start with the overarching story? Like you do acts one, two, and three, write it in, get the story from A to Z, and then go back and say, okay, how can we implement gameplay in these segments? Or do you, is it more of a simultaneous way of writing and introducing mechanics, writing, introducing more mechanics? Um, I mean, in... In, in most ways, it actually really starts from the, the mechanical side as, as, the, as the foundation. Um, because, you know, whether it's Gone Home, Tacoma, or Open Roads, um, you know, I, I see my, like, my starting point is, is a designer, right? My background is being a level designer. And so I always have to think in terms of how is the player going to engage with the story via the game? What are our kind of tools to, you know, put the story into um, in, into the game itself by how the player um, plays? And so, you know, the the story is so often um, an answer to what would be a compelling story to find via the, the gameplay mechanics that we're going to put in front of you and via what the player is doing. Um, and so that's a really a, a motivation to have that design stuff happen up front, know what kind of we have access to in the game, and then write in terms of thinking about, okay, if we have this space that the player is exploring and we have, you know, like you were saying, these overarching plot beats, like the places we want to get to sort of, you know, like, okay, this, this needs to happen and this needs to happen in the story that stays really loose so that we can then say, okay, so that means to get there, you know, we're gonna put these things in this room and, and then you, you use this mechanic to discover this object, which tells you a little bit more about this plot point we're trying to get to, um, but they really can't live independent of one another. And I think that comes all the way down to like, I would never write, you know, start from here's the story I want to tell. Now, what game is going to tell it? It's much more, what's this this player experience that we're excited about creating? Now, what is a story that would be great for that that game? And then they do kind of walk in, in lockstep from that. Do you feel your background as a level designer helps tremendously with your way of storytelling, which is basically it's environment storytelling, which is very hard to do in something like a film or a television show, but with a game or like a, even an amusement park ride, you can walk through something or explore something. And it, it, the space itself tells a story without any words. Right. I think that, um, you know, it's like there, there's no there's no right way to do this stuff. So I would say that my background as a designer and a level designer definitely deeply influences the approach to story that I take. And I think that if anything, it it's why the approach that, that we take can be successful because those things um, are really supporting each other. Um, but the flip side of it is, you know, like having worked on games that really lean into environmental storytelling, um, even when I haven't been you know the lead of and working on the Bioshock series and just being a fan of um, you know games that have that kind of immersive sim background. At the end of the day, there's this um, I feel like there's this uh, kind of platonic ideal of environmental storytelling where it's like you walk through an environment and you know there's no language or or, or dialogue and you just kind of understand the story by what you find. Um, and really, so often it's like 
30, like if you took out all the words, there wouldn't be a story. And so it's like, right. yeah, cause, cause what, it's the classic thing with environment with like graffiti, you know, it's like, well, you need at least one word <laughs> to, to tell you what happened here. <laughs> um, and so I think that for me, it's like, how can you marry those elements so that the player is finding all that they can on their own and then the writing is kind of like bridging that gap um, to give them the rest of the information that doesn't purely live in the world. And in a game like um, Open Roads, where you're engaging in dialogue and a huge part of the game is conversation, I think that extends to saying, what can you find that is actually interesting to talk about? And where does this thing that you found in the environment lead you that you couldn't have gotten to without there being this conversation that takes you there? And then my last question is like, as just purely as a writer, have has anyone approached you about making things like, you know, Tacoma or, you know, uh, Open Roads into Netflix series or some type of other <laughs> medium? Uh, and do you think it would translate well if, if you went that direction? Yeah, I mean, we, we've we had some conversations with like production companies and stuff that, you know, have, we've, we've had some conversations about the idea of like optioning, you know, something um, for adaptation. Um, I think it, I think it could, you know, it could be cool. Anything could be cool, I guess. But you know what I mean? Like there's there's, there's potential there, at least in theory. Um, but I, you know, it's like, I feel like if that's the direction that you want to go, you just need to be like fully committed to it. You know what I mean? And for me, I, I didn't get into making games so that I could make movies. And I think that if there was some, you know, like, unicorn of an opportunity that came around you know if there was some like director that we had huge respect for that was like i i did i, I want to you know adapt one of your games or something that was this like really clear um kind of artistic connection that it would it would be hard to um pass up talking about that but you know in the in the abstract sense um i don't think like i don't think of making other media out of our games just to do it as being a goal. Um, but I could see a world where there could be a, a cool version of, of that. It's just not something that we're like reaching out and trying to find because I hope that the games have, you know, the value they have in and of themselves and that as games, they are, are kind of um, fulfilling, you know, the potential that they, that they could have in that form. Um, and not looking at it as like, oh, we need to translate this into this this other, you know, shape um, to really make it what it needs to be.